So session two, that was entitled um, Celebrating Success. So um, we're really looking forward to you sharing your successes and what's gone well and uh, what you'd like to share with other people from other countries, other projects um, that you feel you're really proud of. Um, and uh, one of the things which uh, Seeing is Believing is rather proud of is the innovation funded projects. So um, <laughs> time is so short today, but we've decided that we can give um, just um, an opportunity for two um, innovation fund projects to do slightly formal presentations before we move on into our breakout sessions. So um, the first half an hour of this session is um, uh, around innovation funded projects. And then the second, uh, after 10.30 for the next uh, three quarters of an hour, that will be the knowledge sharing when we'll ask for your participation. So um, as I say, the first part of this morning is now going to focus on the innovation funded projects. And here, uh, as you saw from the Slido quizzes, we actually funded an awful lot of uh, innovation funded projects. Um, here's as many as I could fit on one slide. Um, and we're actually today gonna hear from the two that are at the bottom of this list. But as you can see, we really um, were very impressed with what we ended up funding um, on through the innovation funded um, projects. And um, we've now only got 20 minutes to share, you know, some achievements with you. And so we chose um, some recent projects because we do feel that many of you might already have heard the results at a, you know, other sort of um, uh, sharing event um, from, you know, some of the others like Head Start and Peak and things which are already being used or some of the DR online courses I know that some of you are engaged with and things. Um, so it was really difficult to decide what to share with you today. So we just have chosen two, which we think have not been so widely shared to date. And so I hope these are sort of uh, innovative for you because they will just um, be the first time that you're having them presented to you. And so um, we've got, as I say, the two that are at the bottom of the list here. So first of all, Dr. Shafi, he's going to present um, on the red reflex screening, saving sight and life in East African children um, that he was um, involved with. And then after Dr. Shafi, um, we'll have Trang presenting on um, a Fred Hollows project from Vietnam on improving vision to empower female factory workers um, that um, she was involved with. So first of all, can I um, introduce uh, Dr. Shafi, who's joining us from his clinical work um, in Malawi. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shafi, for um, joining us today. And um, I'm going to hand straight over to you um, for you to um, give your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll be presenting uh, the project that we implemented in East Africa, in so that's Malawi, Tanzania, and uh, Uganda. And the name of uh, the project was uh, Red Reflex Screening, Saving Sight and Life in East African Children, uh, which we also abbreviated as uh, Saving Eyes and Children uh, Using Red Reflex Examination Secure. So this uh, in this uh, study, we it was a multi-country trial as i said which we implemented in three countries with coordination from the international center for eye health at the london school of hygiene and tropical medicine and uh, it's the study in which we were looking at two main public health uh, problems namely congenital cataract and uh, retinoblastoma so congenital cataract is uh, an opacification uh, in the lens uh, in children, and it's a potentially blinding disease. In fact, at the moment, it's the leading cause of childhood blindness uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. And retinoblastoma is the commonest intraocular cancer uh, that uh, happens. It's quite common uh, in under fives, and uh, in in Africa, it has quite a poor prognosis compared to Europe, where children present much earlier. The lag time is very long uh, in Africa, and when these children present, uh, they tend to not survive as compared to high-income uh, countries. So it's a matter of saving life 
uh, by uh, detecting this uh, retinoblastoma early. And uh, we also have to save sight by uh, detecting congenital uh, cataracts uh, early. So that's how we want to solve that. So in terms of the solution, there's a test which we call a red reflex uh, screening test. It's a very simple uh, examination which can detect both retinoblastoma and cataract. And uh, in our trial, we were looking at the opportunity where in these three countries, the immunization coverage is very high, where over 90% of, uh, of the children in their first year of life, they will meet a primary health care worker for uh, immunization at some point in their life. And new technologies are making this re red reflex screening much easier in the hands of non-specialists. So it's an opportunity for us to do task shifting so with this rationale in mind, uh, we, uh, we thought of training these primary healthcare workers uh, so that they could be screening children who come for immunization for, for retinoblastoma and cataract. And uh, we had some preliminary research uh, with one of the tools, uh, which happened uh, in Tanzania. And uh, we used uh, an infrared-based screening for the red reflex test using an equipment called the CATCAM. And uh, it showed very good results uh, in the hands of maternal and child health care nurses uh, when children uh, came for immunization. Uh, a lot of them, uh, like out of around 3,000 uh, children that were piloted, uh, in that uh, environment, these tools were uh, found to be quite accurate and uh, found reasonably uh, good numbers of uh, cataract and retinoblastoma out of quite a small sample. So our question with that preliminary research building on that, we thought to ask whether this red reflex screening uh, by primary healthcare workers can in, uh, result in early detection of these two childhood uh, eye condition. So the population of children aged up to five years of age presenting for immunization in health centers in Malawi, Uganda, and Tanzania. And uh, we trained these nurses in performing red reflex uh, screening using two different equipments. So we had an ArcLight and NeoCam uh, device, and they were administering this intervention at the time of uh, immunization. And in the end, we compared the case detection rates uh, between these two equipment. And uh, from our rationale, the expected outcome was that this would result in earlier detection of treatable childhood eye conditions, leading to an improved uh, visual outcome uh, and, and survival as well, survival uh, with retinoblastoma, visual outcomes with congenital cataracts. So these are the devices that we were using. On the left is the NeoCam. It uses infrared light, and uh, it's presumed, uh, like from previous uh, studies in the UK, it has got uh, more sensitivity and uh, it's quite ideal for field conditions where you can't create, uh, it's, it's quite bright. These instruments work well in darkness, but the NeoCam can actually use, be used in bright light. And on the right, that's the arc light. It uses uh, natural light to screen for the red reflex. And it's a test that basically lasts just a few seconds. So it's, it's quite easy to integrate it into the routine immunization clinic. And uh, these are just examples showing the Im sort of images that you would get with the NeoCam. Uh, the normal will give you a whitish appearance at the back of the eye. So this is with the infrared light. And then we re-examine using green light. With the green light, the normal would not give you a reflection from the back of the eye. But if there's a lesion at the back, for example, retinoblastoma, it would look bright uh, with the green light. And the arc light, it gives you a red reflex uh, when you shine into it. If there's uh, an abnormality, for example, cataract, you get a white reflex, for example, with the left eye in this child. So the objective was to measure and compare these two devices for primary healthcare worker led a red reflex screening of children in terms of the case detection rates uh, for the referral of serious uh, treatable eye conditions, specifically cataract and retinoblastoma. So this was a pragmatic trial where uh, we are dealing with a real world practice setting as opposed to an explanatory trial, which is just testing uh, the, the equipment, whether they work or not. We were interested in how this equipment would work in a real life setting in the hands of 
primary healthcare workers. And our hypothesis was that the NEOCAM would increase the case detection rate from 2.6 to 4 uh, per 1,000 children screened based on the work uh, preliminary research in Tanzania. And uh, our sample size was 96,000 children across all the three uh, countries. And we planned to recruit 32,000 children uh, in each uh, country. So we had a number of health centers which were randomized to either using the NEOCAM or the ACLIT, and we chose the cell, uh, health centers based on the health centers which had the largest number uh, of children. And the primary healthcare workers were screening these uh, children, and the positive cases were referred to central hospitals where they would be seen by specialists. So it's just a map showing the countries. So this is Malawi, where I am. The other sites were in Tanzania and two sites uh, in, in, Malawi, uh, in Uganda. Malawi had one site uh, only in the southern region. And we used the standardized training manual. All these nurses were trained by one person. And uh, the Applied and Neocam groups were trained in different days uh, to make sure that there's no uh, mixing up or contamination uh, between uh, these two groups. And the training uh, included how to use the devices for each group, how to consent, and how to record the data, and also uh, data sharing and how to perform the. the data. Uh, so we had 28 health centers in total across the countries, and 56 primary health care workers were performing the screening. And one important thing which we did at one month into the trial. Uh, we did an internal pilot in Malawi where after training these healthcare workers, we did the unacceptability and fidelity study where we wanted to check whether this intervention is acceptable to the mothers who are coming with their children for vaccination and whether it was also acceptable to these primary healthcare workers. So as a result of this uh, pilot, there were no changes uh, that we made to the, to the protocol. And at six months, we also did supervision visits across all the countries uh, to ensure that there was quality uh, implementation of, uh, of this intervention. So in terms of the results, uh, we achieved 85% of the planned uh, sample size, 81,000 children were screened. And out of this 81,000 children, we had nine children who had either cataract or retinoblastoma. And uh, the case detection rates were quite low compared to our preliminary research uh, in Tanzania. And there was no significant, uh, statistically significant difference in the case detection rates uh, between the two devices. So for the NEOCAM, it was 0 0.075 per 1,000. And for the ArcLight, it was 0 0.14 per uh, 1,000. So uh, the number of reasons uh, why uh, this could have been the case, where we were finding lower detection rates as uh, compared to the preliminary research before we did this trial. And uh, this could be because um, the previous uh, like congenital cataract prevalence, uh, which we found in the preliminary research, could have been an overestimation because this was more of a, a controlled setting where the people may have heard that there's this study happening uh, uh, at, uh, at a large uh, hospital and most of the uh, children who were examined were from around that central hospital said more may have gone uh, with their children and another reason could be that this is actually a pragmatic trial as, com as opposed to the preliminary research which we carried out in this trial we were dealing with real life uh, conditions it's a less controlled environment and it's possible that because these are very rare conditions, but very of uh, public health significant, there might be a change in fidelity as time progresses, where if the nurses probably saw that they are finding a lot of negative children, it might have reduced their motivation, uh, maybe to look for more and more of this. And there could be other implementation uh, issues, uh, which uh, we are not uh, aware of. So in view of this, uh, like our team has a plan to continue on uh, with the trial, where we want to do a trial evaluation. Uh, so this is implementation research. Again, this is a pragmatic uh, approach where we are trying to investigate the, the real life settings where these are very good tools. They have been proven from previous research that they detect cataract and retinoblastoma with a high level of 
sensitivity and specificity in the hands of uh, specialists. What could be the reasons why they did not pick a lot of children in the hands of primary health care workers during uh, immunization workers? So we are proposing uh, further research at the moment with the same sample of nurses that we had trained uh, to see whether their diagnostic skills have changed over time. We're going to have a more enriched uh, sample from a hospital setup where we're going to have uh, patients with cataract or retinoblastoma and normal patients. And we're going to see how these nurses are going to perform. And we're also going to take a qualitative approach to try to investigate uh, some of the reasons uh, that could explain uh, the lower cases that we found. So all in all, these findings are very, very important uh, because uh, there are not many eye, speci eye specialists uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, this, these are tests that should be shifted to lower cadres uh, to try uh, to, uh, to pick some of these cases. And it's important uh, to investigate uh, why this is the case or some of the factors that could help uh, in, uh, in, in promoting uh, this test. So I've taken slightly more time uh, than uh, was all allocated to me. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, but we're very uh, thankful otherwise for uh, the support from uh, seeing is believing, uh, especially uh, to, uh, to the links program, uh, which we have with our UK uh, partners and uh, for sponsoring this work, uh, which uh, is quite important uh, uh, to, to guiding the policy with regard to early detection of cataract and retinoblastoma in our setup. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shafi. Thank you. Yes, uh, a lot to report. Sorry, we can't give you more time, but um, I think everyone will agree this has been very exciting, and I'm particularly very excited about it because it's focusing on the primary healthcare workers and also on low cost equipment, what actually works, what level of equipment do you need to get it to work at this level um, at the immunization clinics in this case. Great work. Um, so thank you very much. It's been really wonderful. Um, and um, sorry um, that there's not time for any questions or anything, but if you do have any questions for Dr. Shappy, do put them in the, the chat box and maybe we can forward them to him and he can get back to you. So thank you very much, Dr. Shappy. Thank you. Okay, now we're moving to another continent. Uh, we're off to Asia and uh, we had another very different uh, innovation project in, uh, with Fred Hollows Foundation about improving vision to empower female factory workers. So again, a very different project um, and uh, Triang, um, over to you. And I hope your sound um, and video uh, continues with us as you take us through yes. your uh, innovation funded project. Yes, uh, good morning everyone and afternoon everyone. My name is Pamit Cha. I am project manager of the Fred Hollow Foundation in Vietnam. Uh, I will just the improving vision to empower female factory worker project in Vietnam. So to celebrate the achievement of uh, the IB program and pen for this program support in Vietnam for many years since 2008. I would like to share to you the success of this project. So I'm uh, pleased to introduce brief, uh, this uh, faculty eye care project model as below. Uh, uh, the goal of this project is that the uh, visual impairment and available planning among women working in the factory is decreased. Uh, to achieve this goal, uh, the project started with the training of touristic eye care staff, to factory medical staff and group headquarters, and organized regularly eye care education events. Uh, this training staff then share eye care knowledge, uh, conduct eye screening, and comprehensive eye care examination to other workers. The project also supports some automatic equipment to them to conduct the course. Uh, workers, when uh, gaining eye care knowledge, they product eye relaxing the exercise where I go where required. And they also together with a factory to improve the working environment. And especially they conduct visual activity self-check at this corner and a set factory medical room for other disease screening. And if workers have an eye disease or reproductive error, they will be supported uh, for achievement or disease ethical. 
then they committed to work at normal and accepted the medical room for using AI the following up. And now I believe uh, to introduce some photo of the project activity to help you understand more of the project. Uh, the, the project provides training on occupational eye health for 358 group uh, workers. And here are the picture of worker activity during the training. The project also organized uh, the project also organized um, the primary eye care training for 16 factory medical staff and provide equipment to nine factory medical room. Here are the photo of the medical staff with the trainer and equipment, equipment provided. Uh, together with the factory, uh, uh, organized different type of eye care ed education event to 50,000 workers. Uh, these are the pictures of eye care education facilitated by the invited eye doctor and the eye care contact which were combined in the factory spoken day. The project also uh, produced many kind of eye care education materials, such as uh, seven video clips of eye care, uh, head t-shirt and curtain bag with the eye care message, and the poster with eye care cutting, and eye care book, a handbook uh, provided to our worker. The project, uh, project uh, provides eye screening for our worker organize comprehensive eye examination to uh, 6,000 workers with eye problem and provide spectacle to 3,300 workers and support a treatment cost for more than 100 uh, workers. Uh, the project uh, organized a training combined uh, with action plan discussion with the factory management board on occupational eye health. Uh, then the action plan was conducted uh, to improve working environment for better eye health. Uh, for example, the plan inside the book uh, play was rearranged to improve the ventilation system. And the fluorescent lighting was replaced with the LED lights. And the ladder safety goggles were provided to workers uh, working in uh, with the ladder coaching machine. And post uh, factory uh, staff were sent to attend the occupation health safety environment training course. Uh, completing about activity, the project uh, achieved the success as so it uh, as so from the project evaluation. Uh, the first uh, worker practice uh, of eye care is uh, increased in comparing the data gathered from the beginning and the end of, of, uh, of the project. Uh, for example, the percentage of uh, worker activities in eye care information has increased from 40% to 63%, and the percentage uh, of worker practice eye protection and disease prevention has increased significantly from 15% to uh, 56%. And 86% uh, of workers conduct visual equity cell check. And also, 100% worker, of workers do eye relaxing exercise during the break time that they, they did not uh, practice before the project. The second worker I have is improved. There were significant reduction uh, in health complaints after work, including uh, eye strain were decreased from uh, 53% to 11%, and headache were reduced from uh, 30% to 10%, and eye disease, uh, such as eye infection, were decreased significantly uh, from 15% to 2%, and the incidence of eye injury were reduced by 50%. And the third, uh, labor product, uh, productivity and the quality of product have been improved. Uh, for example, the, fact, uh, the factory saw their average production uh, percent increase from uh, 88% to uh, 91%. And the average number of products were also increased uh, to 2,282 uh, products. And uh, worker also feeling more confident at work. And the final 
trong commitment of, of the factory and trader union for ICA support up uh, the project. For example, the two factories share their annual ICA plan with an annual budget of 40,000 US dollars. And the electronic uh, factory maintain their annual ice screening for our workers. The National Trader Union continue to introduce uh, the factory ICA model with other province and uh, factory in their national workshop conference and during their visit to the factory. The National Trader Union also had a project that they wish to collaborate with FHF in the future to replicate the model. That are some success of this uh, project and thanks to the HIB program and standard chapter band for support of a thousand people in Vietnam having better eye care. And thank you all for listening. Fang, thank you very much. That was a yes. great presentation. Sorry, again, we've got such short time to cover such huge topics. Um, so uh, what, uh, what we've uh, heard today are two very different um, presentations. Uh, this one, I think, really demonstrates how eye care workers need to think about who they need to engage with to really um, learn and understand how they reach people who are very receptive to, to eye care, um, both the parents in Dr. Shappi's presentation and now the, the factory workers themselves in uh, Trang's presentation. So I think these are, these are great examples of how we need to work with a wider sector of uh, either health workers or just generally getting our messages out there. But some great results from both of those projects, which again, for the innovation funded projects, we didn't know that we would get great results when we agreed to fund this. We were taking a bit of a punt, but I'm really pleased that these two projects showed how by looking a little wider as to who we should engage with, we can really um, do some great work and uh, expand our knowledge and things. So that's great. Thank you very much.